by now it's fair to say that PXG are causing you all kinds of dilemmas and as ever causing quite a stir in the industry along the way. You see, very recently we saw the introduction of the new, let's call it budget or entry lineup of 0211, driver, fairway woods, hybrids and irons. They're super impressive and to me that begs a huge question in the PXG lineup. That question being, should I pay the premium for their Gen 5 lineup or should I just stick to 0211? What is the difference between the two? Yes, in today's video, I'm gonna do a very simple and straightforward test. I have got hybrids, I've got fairway woods, and I've got drivers from each model lineup. They're lofted exactly the same. I've got a four hybrid, I've got a five wood, and I've got the driver set at nine degrees. They've also got exactly the same shaft in each of these clubs. And I'm looking down at some dry ball data that I've already collected, and it is very interesting indeed. I might prove the exact type of information that you're gonna need if you're considering buying either of these two models. Now I am of course gonna talk about price because the difference between Gen 5 and 0211 is premium, entry level. Price is obviously a key factor. But, and there's a big but, PXG's prices are so volatile right now that even when I wrote the sort of script out for this video, the outline for this video, I considered the price differences to be 100 pounds between the 0211 driver and Gen 5 driver. I think it was 80 pound difference between the fairway woods and 70 pound difference between that of the hybrids. But in recent days, that information is already out of date. This is filmed in late November. And just recently, this Gen 5 driver, the premium lineup driver is 319 UK pounds, which makes it exactly the same price as the 0211. So that is that kind of dilemma that is always thrown into the mix and makes this kind of thing very difficult to give you precise information, up-to-date information in terms of what PXG are doing with their pricing right now. Well, let's assume there's a bit of a sale going on. That price is gonna go back up. The 0 to 11 is gonna go back down because surely there's gotta be a difference between these two product lineups. So we've got a significant price difference, especially when you consider you might be buying a couple of fairway woods or a couple of hybrids. There's a lot of money to be saved by that entry level product. So the question is, in terms of performance, what is the difference? What are you getting for your extra dollars in this Gen 5 lineup? But I think we'll all agree that whichever lineup you go with, PXG are really producing the best value products right there out on the marketplace. That driver at 319 pounds is obviously significantly different than all the other big boys that are out there. So there's certainly value to be had. Before I go to look at the performance differences, what is the sort of technology differences at least that PXG are claiming to be built into their products, their Gen 5 premium lineup, that would uh, justify that price difference and have you paying that extra money? Right, so alongside me is hopefully some information which shows you ex well what the differences are and what the similarities are. And to be quite honest with you, there are more similarities than there are differences in terms of technology or materials used because you can see that uh, very much the same type of materials are being used in both products in right throughout the lineups. So the question is, if the tech is the same, if the materials are the same, why are we being asked to pay more money for Gen 5 over 0 to 11? We're getting there. Now, when I say we're getting there, we're getting towards the performance end, which is coming very shortly, and that's where, to me, ultimately where the truth lies. But the main difference that you're paying for in terms of technology, in my opinion, is down here. It's adjustability. Whilst there is limited adjustability in the driver, at least from the 0 to 11 range, there is zero adjustability in the fairway wood and that of the hybrid. So whatever loft and lie angle you buy that in, that's the way it stays. There are some adjustments to be made in the driver, but then you consider the Gen 5 lineup and not only is there adjustability in terms of loft and lie angle in all of the products mentioned, but then there's this clever little weighting system that again appears in every one, the hybrid, the fairway wood and the driver, which makes custom fit. Well, it takes it to a different level in terms of the options that your custom fitter at least has to make this product work best for you. And that's a significant difference. 
but I've been custom fit for the Gen 5. I've not been custom fit for the 0211. They do have the same shafting, or at least they will have. There's a slightly different one in the driver right now. They will have exactly the same shaft in all the numbers that you see. And the question is, has that adjustability made that product worth that premium figure that I need to pay to access it? Right, just before we do get to those numbers, and I promise you we will very shortly, I suppose we've got to quickly talk about aesthetics because generally that can be a separator in terms of at least when there's a significant price difference. I always say the same thing in these videos, a question sort of what am I losing in terms of quality of components? We've already seen that materials used are very similar, but in terms of aesthetics, it's a really interesting one. And I mentioned in the O211 review that I did very recently that I'm almost favoring the looks of the O211 range than I am of the Gen 5. They've certainly toned it down Gen 5 in terms of the crown. It used to be a sort of a very bright white triangle element in there, which I wasn't keen on. They've toned it down, but with the O211, they've gone very much classic in their looks. And like I said, and then from a shelf appeal perspective, not a lot to split them, to be quite honest with you. And uh, I really can't tell you just how good this 0211 lineup looks. Anyway, let's hit some balls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a couple of drives on camera. In fact, What I'm going to do is hit a couple of drives on camera to see if we can pick up any differences in terms of sound. Unfortunately, I will have to stop and change the shaft. So this is the 0211. I mean, again, going back to my original review, sounds really good. It's got that good mix of feels like it's shooting out there, but soft enough because I do not like the sort of loud bang and hard feel that came off the original. 0211 lineup. So bear with me, I'll just go and swap shafts and we'll try Gen 5. Right, we are back. Let's see what this thing sounds like. That's really interesting and I found it throughout the testing and I hope again that you're managing to pick that up. The audio is never that great inside here. But interesting enough, there's a slightly harsher, louder sound that comes from the Gen 5. And from a sound perspective, if I'm being quite honest with you, again, I prefer the sound that comes out the O211. Again, Gen 5, fairway wood, five would really like these things. I think, again, the interesting bit for me is from a profile perspective, let alone a looks perspective, they're both very, very similar in their shaping and styling. Sit really neat behind the ball, low profile, which is something that I really like indeed. And again, do you know what? Um, I mentioned the difference in terms of sound when you're into the driver. When you're into the fairway woods and into the hybrids, they sound very similar. I don't get that same kind of noise difference. But performance-wise, there's a little bit going on that seems maybe slightly different, but we'll get to that very, very shortly. In fact, we'll get there now because I could go on to hit two hybrids. The difference with the hybrids, the only mention I'll make is the shaping and the profile. It's um, a slightly smaller compact head in the O211. I'd say perhaps more traditional old style uh, players hybrid, if you like, in terms of the shaping and profile. But from a sound perspective, again, very, very similar indeed, but I do think these are the only two from a driver, from the fairway, shaping profile, very similar address, hybrids, slightly different, and may sway you if you've got a particular preference to how you like your hybrids to look. That's enough, let's have a look at the data. I'm gonna quickly show you one other thing that is different, and that's the quality of the head covers. The premium lineup in uh, PXG's head covers always been really, really good. Clearly, there is a difference in what you get in 0211. It is without doubt. Cheaper materials being used there, but I'm sure that's not going to sway you one way or the other when you're uh, choosing your golf clubs. But right, let's get into this information. Let's start off with the hybrid at that bottom end of the bag. I'm going to go through um, ball speeds. Uh, as you can see, a little bit quicker with Gen 5. Launch angle, arguably very, very similar when you consider over a number of shots, as is that spin number. Um, Peak height, absolutely nothing to separate it whatsoever. Um, 185 carry 
on the Gen 5 181 on the 0211. I would say nothing to separate them. Yes, there's four yards difference in terms of carry. Be a lot to do with the launch and the spin number that determine that. That ball speed, like I said, a little bit faster out of Gen 5, but nothing to separate them in that 22 degree uh, four hybrid. Next up is the five wood, and again, very marginally but slightly faster ball speeds coming out the Gen 5 launch angle and conditions very, very similar. Again, as is the spin. Peak height, my God, these are like <laughs> inseparable again. Uh, we've got a 196 carry five wood um, on the 0211, a 201 carry on the Gen 5. Both those numbers and even the four hybrids slightly down, I would say we're using range balls this morning in slightly wet and damp conditions. So the numbers are down slightly. Um, but finally, we go into the driver. Um, it's an interesting one, this. The 0 to 11 ball speed at 141 mile an hour was faster than that of the Gen 5. But, and there's a big but, and I think this is key to this really, Launch angle on the um, 0 to 11, 17.4, as opposed to 15.8 on the Gen 5. Spin number lower on the Gen 5. Um, peak height lower on the Gen 5. Overall carry greater on Gen 5. Why is that so important? Well, if you think about it, the things that went wrong with this is it probably launched a little bit higher and it spun a little bit higher. And if those two things were changed in the Gen 5 driver, in the 0 to 11 driver, or they were, you had the ability to change those numbers and have an impact on those numbers, then arguably the performance at the club head itself would have been very, very similar. I was custom fit for the Gen 5, and the changes that were made are always to get the optimal performance out of the club in your hands. And for me, the optimal numbers in terms of the Gen 5 driver are far greater than that of the 0211. And you can see that from the launch angle, the spin number, and then ultimately that is in carry distance. So it goes back to what do you pay your extra money for? Well, you pay your money for the ability to get custom fit in a much more intricate way in terms of detail than you do with the 0211. The question is, is that enough to justify the price difference? Well, that's a question you need to ask yourself. I think arguably you could say four or five yards difference per club, and I'm gonna pay 70, 80 pound, maybe 100 pound difference per club. Is that really gonna be beneficial to me? Hmm, maybe not. You've then, I think, got to ask yourself what kind of help and adjustability you want in your club head because if you're looking to really work against a draw or a fade bias, the ability to change the weighting system to help correct that, straighten it a little bit, however driver club technology is supposed to work, then you could say that, yes, it is worth that help. So it's not about distance. It's more about ability to uh, errad or help or limit my bad shot in my bag. So for me, they're the considerations you need to make. But I'll go back to the beginning. The big thing for me right now is PXG, love them or hate them along the way in this journey. What they're doing yet again is always upsetting the marketplace. And certainly with this pricing structure they've got throughout any of the ranges you look at, it's extremely competitive. And I'd argue that it is the best value product uh, out there right now. It really is doing an incredible job. And I say longer may it continue. The problem is when you buy your product, beware because you do not know what's going to happen next in terms of that pricing structure either. Right, I hope that gave you some kind of guidance and help if you're considering uh, purchasing one of these lineups, then uh, that might have helped point you at least in the right direction. But as ever, the point is go out and try it yourself and uh, learn for your own testing what it did for your game or didn't. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. It is absolutely miserable here in the UK, hence we've been in here all day, so we might have a few videos that are, uh, well, they're data-led and not so much out on the golf course. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.